Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Here's a question for all my turbo guys. Big turbo versus smaller turbo. Does the big turbo always make more power? In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison between two different size turbos. One is the T4 base GT45, the inexpensive turbo that we always use from DNA. The other is a larger T6 S475. In this case, this one came from Summit Racing. They're available other places as well. But we're going to compare the two turbos. We're going to show you that at the different boost levels, at the lower boost levels, the smaller turbo actually keeps pace with the larger turbo. And it isn't until we get way up in power and boost that the big turbo actually starts taking off and leaving the smaller turbo behind. To get things started on our turbo comparison, what happens when we have too small of a turbo for a given power output or too big of a turbo for a given power out output, we're going to take a look at a test I did on a 4.8 liter LS. And this is the 4.8 liter that I've used for years and years and years. It basically was a Gen 3 motor with Gen 4 internals in it. It had the stock crank, stock Gen 4 rods. We did have forged pistons in it. These were JE small dome pistons so that we could get the compression up a little bit because we had done a bunch of testing with it. It had stock 706 heads with a valve spring upgrade. It had the stock truck intake manifold. And we either use a stock throttle body or a direct replacement aftermarket piece. Like a lot of times we'll use the AccuFab piece. We ran long tube headers in it. We had, I think, 1500 cc injectors in this because we were turning the boost up. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. And we have a dedicated fuel system on the dyno it's a complete aeromotive uh, pump and regulator so there's more than enough fuel flow to run the the motor at the boosted power levels that we need we've made you know over 1500 horsepower with the fuel system so that's not a problem we were running e85 when we were running under boost we tried running e85 when the thing was natural naturally aspirated and really saw no gain this thing was equipped with a stage two turbo cam from Brian Tooley Racing and that offered a 605 uh, 588 lift split a 226 231 degree duration split and 113 plus 4 LSA in my opinion again we we had done a bunch of testing with that particular camshaft but in my opinion a 4.8 liter doesn't need a cam that big especially to run in these power levels if you go down 10 or even 15 or more degrees of intake duration on this thing, put a milder cam in it, what will happen is the 4.8 liter, the little 4.8 liter will actually just drive a whole lot better and you won't be giving up anything. The only thing that will happen is maybe you need to add another pound of boost or so to get to the power level that you're at, but that's always a kind of a better way to go anyway. On the 4.8, I like running milder camshafts because it's smaller um, as we go up to a 5.3 or a 6.0 this kind of cam uh, you know kind of becomes better although since every cam is a turbo cam you could run any NA cam you could run a truck cam you know, almost anything and, and make this kind of power so run naturally aspirated our 4.8 liter produced 409 horsepower this is flywheel horsepower 366.6 foot pounds of torque and here's what happened when we added our single turbo kit. You can see power jumped up to 565 horsepower, 527 foot-pounds of torque. And this is at about six pounds. And we'll go over all the different boost levels. We'll take a look at the boost curves and all of that. So there's a lot of stuff to go over here. But I just wanted to show you what happened when we added boost to our NA combination. So we kind of had a reference point to start from. This was with a single turbo. It was a GT45, the inexpensive eBay turbo that we always run on everything. It was run with an air-to-water intercooler, uh, running ambient dyno water through it. And as I said, we ran this thing on E85. So even at low boost, you're talking about, you know, you're talking about over 550 horsepower fairly easily. It made good gains, had good power everywhere. Now we'll take a look at a comparison between running this small GT45 turbo and then running a larger S475 Borg Warner turbo, which these two turbos would be you know, at use for different power levels, but we'll show what happens running these two on this little 4.8. 
We've taken a look at what happens when we add a turbo setup, in this case our single turbo setup on the 4.8 liter. We've seen what happens when we add boost, and that's fairly typical if you have the turbo size even remotely correctly. Obviously it's going to work very well. And so I want to show you what happens when we try different turbos on the same combination, and what happens when we eventually move up in power where one of these turbos becomes actually too small. So we have our 4.8 liter, and then we added our single turbo, which was our GT45 from DNA. Now that particular turbo was, uh, the specs on the turbo were, the compressor wheel was a, a 77 by 87 millimeter, and the turbine side was a 69 by 98 millimeter. It was a T4, it had a 1.0 AR on the hot side, it had a three and a half inch V-band exhaust, which we used a, a three and a half inch V-band and then welded the exhaust onto that, so it was three and a half inches. It wasn't very long, so very free flowing exhaust. We had our two exhaust manifolds, our truck manifolds feeding our Y pipe with two turbo smart wastegates feeding this. This was a divided housing, but we didn't use a divided housing to feed it. What we did was our Y pipe ended in a three inch V-band and then we had a adapter going from the V-band to, in this case, a T4, but we would also try a T6, and so this setup allowed us to easily jump between the two different size turbos, the two different frame turbos, both the T4 and the T6. But let's take a look now at what happened when we added our turbo from Summit Racing. This was an S475, again, a fairly inexpensive turbo from the guys at Summit, more than the GT40 is, but it's quite a bit bigger and capable of a lot more power. And as you can see, the Summit Racing did pick up a little bit of power. Both of these are run right at about six pounds. After we take a look at these power levels, we're going to take a look at the associated boost curves. We ran a TC1 electronic boost controller on all these, and what I want to show here is that in a certain power range, both of these turbos are essentially doing the same thing until we start asking one of the turbos to do something that it can no longer do. In this case, that supply a lot more power than it's capable of. So our T6 turbo, the Summit Racing S475, was a T6 hot side. It had a 1.32 AR. The hot side was an 88 by 96, so bigger than the than the um, GT45. The cold side, the compressor, was a 75 by 100. So the turbo was bigger basically, and, and certainly capable of more power. That particular turbo was listed as flowing, uh, potentially flowing 98 pounds a minute. So it has the ability to support near a thousand horsepower. And we've done that with this kind of turbo. So we know that it will do that. If you take a look, but at this low boost level, you can see that the power numbers are very, very comparable. The Summit Racing maybe did a little bit better um, at the top, but in this six pound range, both of these turbos are capable of doing this. And if you were running something at six pounds, I would obviously pick the smaller turbo. We're not showing it here, but the response rate would obviously be better. Even though in the GT45, the response rate is not, not ideal for that size turbo either, but the good thing, it is inexpensive. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we raise the boost. We jump things up to 10 pounds. That is our S470, or that is our GT45. Here is the Summit S475. And we're, since this is at 650 horsepower flywheel, and in this case, both of these turbos are able to support this power level. The GT45 is still able to supply this kind of power level. We've made as much as 750, but over 700 is where you start getting into problems with the GT45. The Summit Racing has no problem at this power level. This thing is not even really getting started yet, so... Um, let's take a look and see what happened when we up the boost even more to our final step. And this is where we start to see separation of the two. So this was run at 14 pounds. This is with our GT45. And then again, all this run on E85. 14 pounds on the Summit Racing. And here's where you start to see them diverging dramatically. And the reason for this is that the, the small DNA GT45 isn't able to support this power level. It doesn't have enough flow rate. We, we've managed to exceed 700, and if we keep, kept cranking up the boost, we could make a little bit more power, but we're just never going to do what the other Summit Racing Turbo does. And you can see, even down low, the Summit is still responding fairly well, so it's basically making more power everywhere. And what we did eventually with the bigger turbo, the Summit Turbo, is we went up even farther in boost in this case, and this is important because... Uh, we eventually made 
829 horsepower. Peak torque was at uh, 760 foot-pounds. As you can see, as we went up and up and boost, it made more and more power, exactly what you'd expect of a turbo combination. But the thing is, the small turbo cannot do that. It doesn't have the flow rate to be able to do that where the big turbo does. But on the low end of the scale, if you're only looking at, you know, six pounds or even 10 pounds, the smaller turbo actually is working very well, as good as the bigger turbo is, and it's probably more than likely uh, going to be more responsive. So in the lower levels, small turbo, lots of power, big turbos. Now let's check out the boost curves. After taking a look at the differences in power between the two turbos, it's time to take a look at the boost curves to make sure that everything, when we did the boost test on these, that we supplied the same boost from both the turbos, and we did, and we monitored both boost pressure and back pressure. So this is the boost pressure. This is our six pound kit, and some of you might be wondering, hey Richard, that doesn't look like six pounds. It looks like it's getting up to near eight pounds and then dropping down to about seven and a half pounds. It is. The six PSI number actually is the number that we programmed into the TC1 electronic boost boost controller and this is what the dyno readout is and what you're looking for really is that the dyno is that the boost curve is the same so it's it's commanding six pounds on the tc1 and we're reading a little bit higher than that by a pound a pound and a half let's say at the top end on this thing obviously it's not consistent all the way through but it's only varying by about four tenths of a pound so it's it's pretty close here is the boost pressure and back pressure curves of the gt45 we have had uh, out at the top, we had a peak of 7.4 pounds of boost, and we had 11.6 pounds of back pressure. Here's what happened when we added the bigger Summit Turbo at, at the same boost. You can see the boost curve is the same. They're within a tenth or so of each other on the boost curves. And then, but the back pressure is quite a bit lower. So even at the same 7.4 pounds of boost pressure, the maximum back pressure that we got on the Summit Turbo was only 7.9 PSI, so only just a little bit more than one to one compared to the boost pressure. And it started out quite a bit lower. Down here at 3,500, the back pressure on the S475 was 3.9 pounds, so quite a bit lower than boost. And the DNA, uh, the GT45 Turbo was 6.2 pounds of back pressure. So interesting stuff. And we'll take a look at what happened when we went up higher in boost. And what I'm going to do is get rid of these. Because if we get too many of these runs on here at once, it gets pretty, pretty crowded here. So... Now we can look at the boost pressure and back pressure of our eight of our 10 pound run. You can see it was a little bit higher than 10 pounds. It got up to 10.8 pounds, but dropped down to about 10.2 pounds. This is on the GT45 turbo, and we saw a peak uh, back pressure reading of 15 pounds. So about 1.5 to 1 on the DNA GT45. Here is this is in comparison to the Summit Racing Turbo. And you can see boost pressure identical within one tenth of a pound. Again, back pressure quite a bit less. It starts out like down here at 3,500. The S475 is 5.4 pounds. The GT45 is 8 pounds already. And out at the top, we're looking at a difference of between uh, 15 pounds to just 10 pounds. So the S475 actually has slightly less back pressure than it has boost pressure, which obviously is a good thing. Now it's going to trade off response when you do that, but it's obviously going to make a lot more power when you can have that kind of boost pressure and back pressure relationship. So let's take a look at our final run where we ran 14 pounds. So this is our final run. This is at 14 pounds with the S475 versus the, the D DNA GT45. And on the GT45, you see that we had, even though we were commanding 14 pounds, it was only able to do that um, out to about 5,500 RPM. And then we saw a falling boost curve because it just can't support that. It can't support that pressure at that flow rate. So we ended up with, out here at the end, was only 12 and a half pounds of boost. And where it had 19.1 pounds of back pressure with its 12 and a half pounds of boost. So still quite a bit of back pressure. Here's what happened when we ran the S475 at the same. Again, the, the S475 was able to maintain that same boost pressure basically flat all the way through within a tenth or two of a pound of boost. So it was very stable. 
and it had much less, it actually had less back pressure than boost pressure. It had 14.8 pounds of boost and only 14.1 or 14 point, yeah, 14.1 pounds of back pressure. Again, we started out with a big differential, seven pounds versus 10, seven and a half pounds versus 10 and a half pounds down at 3,500 RPM. So the bigger turbo, uh, slightly less responsive, but a lot more power potential. And we can take a look at the, also at the final run that we made where it was 16 pounds on the Summit Racing Turbo. Again, uh, we just had a nice flat boost curve, but still it had only there did the boost pressure and back pressure become even one to one. And that was only out at 6,500 RPM. So that size turbo for this power level and this boost level, starting from the NA 4.8 liter, obviously works fairly well. But if you want more response, look for the smaller turbo. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this comparison comparing the smaller T4 GT45 turbo, our low buck turbo, compared to the larger T6 S475 from Summit Racing? Well, the reason that I did this video is there's a lot of misinformation out there on turbo sizing. And for some reason, guys tend to think, oh, the bigger turbo, you know, makes more power per pound of boost. And they think that that's a universal thing. And the reality is it's not. The smaller turbos actually work very well, as we showed here. Here, the GT45 kept pace with the larger S475 turbo all the way up to the point where it no longer could. I mean, it is about a 700 to 750 horsepower turbo. That's kind of the range that we use it in. And as we saw, as we approached that flow limit of that smaller turbo, the S475 started making more boost and started making more power. And that's what you'll normally see. If the turbo is too small for the application, based on the naturally aspirated power output and the boost that you're trying to run with it, it will no longer be able to keep up. And what will happen, even though we had an electronic wastegate controller, you'll start to see the thing just fall off and boost because it can't support that boost level at that power level. The S475 had no problem doing that. Obviously, when we were when we had it tuned for the 14, 15 pound range, it had no problem. Nice flat boost curve. Even when we up to high, when we went up to higher boost, it could still support more and more power because, as we know, it's about a thousand horsepower turbo. So remember, smaller turbos work well at lower power levels. Bigger turbos work well at bigger power power levels. No surprise there. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.